Hi there, Prairie Plant Girl here. Welcome to my garden. It's uh, June 24th today, and I thought we'd take a walk around and see what's growing and uh, what's doing well and maybe what's not doing so well uh, near the end of June here in Saskatchewan, Canada. So, like I said, I'm in Saskatchewan, Canada. We have an average of 110 frost-free days here in my area. So my garden goes in and grows quickly uh, and my season is very short. Uh, right now we're getting uh, about mid-20s and sometimes peaking into the 30s uh, for daytime highs. And uh, we get kind of into the low, like 10 to, to 13 at night. We were, had a really nice cool off for us here last night and it got down to around 10 so it's actually a little bit chilly right now it's only about 11 degrees but uh, that'll just give you a little bit of an idea about the climate I'm working in here I garden mostly in raised beds uh, our, our soil here is really clay my neighborhood is built on an old slough so heavy 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 clay so I've built four foot by eight foot um, garden beds I think that's about a meter and a half by three meters something like that um, and they're raised they're the raised beds are filled mostly with peat moss uh, composted manure and my own homemade compost I hot compost I'm on about my fourth fourth batch of it now this year um, so I like to use that to add into my garden beds whenever possible uh, the some of the areas that I garden in you'll see are like large pots um, or raised beds that are raised right off the ground but mostly I garden in these beds I do have a couple of these uh, wooden structure beds here that are two feet by by eight feet um, just at the end just to make it easy to reach across because there's a fence on the other side but uh, that gives you an idea of uh, what I'm gardening with You'll see a lot of vertical structures around me, and that's because I take a lot of things up if I can. Uh, so let's let's have a look around and see what's growing on June 24th, 2022. We're going to start over here. Uh, this is in the uh, northeast corner of my garden. And I'm hoping to get through these beds over here before the, the sun gets poking over the neighbor's trees and starts making crazy shadows on you. So I had some netting on here and uh, I just pushed it back, but this bed contains a whole menagerie of things. So we started here, we have some celery. Now it's looking a little bit rough. Um, I just realized yesterday that my, um, my automatic sprinkler system hasn't been working so these haven't been none of my garden has been getting quite the the watering that it needs in behind the celery um, I have a little bit of bok choy I'll have to bring you in so you can have a better look at that and then there's some kale so I have red Russian kale uh, dinosaur kale and dwarf green kale I believe it is <laughs> it's buster and then I have some purple and white kohlrabi in the front here. And behind that, I have Jade Cross and Long Island Brussels sprouts. And I think that's everything that's in here. So everything's looking really good. Uh, no bulbing up on the kohlrabi yet. But it's looking really nice and healthy. The uh, Brussels sprouts are getting nice and tall, actually. They're probably getting where they'd like to have this netting is only only about 45 centimeters tall. So it's starting to get kind of squished down by the netting. I might have to to take it off. And the plants are big enough now that any um, flea beetles, which is why I like to use the netting, won't be attacking it. Um, but I could still have the, uh, the cabbage moth uh, butterflies on some of these things. But this is small enough bed, I might need to just take the netting off and, and uh, monitor for the moths.
coming south from the bed that we were just looking at, I've actually built in a smaller uh, bed where this used to be my compost area between two beds. So this, I believe, is three feet or about a meter long by two feet wide. And um, right now it has some spinach in it. And I've been really enjoying this. You can see I've been eating off of it quite a bit. There's some eucapa lettuce. Whoops, and I just apparently harvested a leaf. This is beautiful lettuce. First year I've grown it. It's a nice crunchy um, heading lettuce. Uh, closer to kind of like the iceberg lettuce that you might find in the store, which is lettuce my husband prefers. So I thought I'd give it a try this year and I'm really enjoying it. Uh, I'm not sure if he's actually had any yet, but, but I'm really enjoying it. It has a nice crisp texture. It's supposed to head up, but I've been taking it like leaf lettuce. Um, but you can see hopefully here how it's been trying to head up on this one plant. And actually it's trying to head up here. There's a spinach in the way, but I can remember to take that in with me. I have a variety of other lettuces on the other side there. I can't remember what they all are. So I've been also just enjoying taking all those and making a nice, nice salad mix. Uh, there's a few radishes in behind. They're not really doing much, but again, I think that might be because um, it was, we haven't been getting the moisture in here that uh, I thought we were getting. And uh, by the time I realized, I think some of these things, we had a few days into the thirties and I think that was just too much for some of these. Uh, there's a little bit of pak choy back here and I'm trying to remember what this is because that's not pak choy. It looks like I threw a couple of broccoli maybe in the back there so we'll have to to wait and see because they're not labeled and I don't remember putting broccoli back there. So we'll, we'll find out what it is I guess when, when it matures. I had a few cell packs left of things I had started that just had been in their packs too long and just kind of popped them into random places throughout the, the garden here. Moving past that bed, I have a whole bed of cabbages, and this is a variety of cabbage. So I have like Stonehead, Gunma, uh, Katarina. What else do I have in here? Copenhagen Market. I have a red mammoth in here. Quite a few, and they're starting to to bring their their leaves together and want to form heads on some of them. They're looking really good. I'm really happy so far. Not a lot of damage. Looks like I have some sort of a, a worm in this, built a little nest on this leaf here. It wasn't a cabbage worm, so I'm not sure what it was. Um, but most, most of these are doing really well. But again, I've been keeping the netting on them. And this bed here gets, like right now it's in full shade early in the morning. It's only just, just turned seven o'clock now. Um, so this bed gets a, the shade in the morning until the sun comes around and it gets about six hours of sun in the afternoon um, near the end of the day and less like it'd get more down at that first end where we were at with the, t the celery and then it gets less and less as it gets down to this end but the uh, brassicas seem to like that This bed contains my cauliflower and my broccoli uh, and a few onions. And I didn't realize it till yesterday, but I actually have cauliflower and broccoli starting to head up in here. So I'll be harvesting out of this bed probably within a week. Um, maybe even today, there's a cauliflower I wanna look at. Um, I have early snowball, which was the latest cauliflower that I planted. Um, so it's not quite ready yet. I have cheddar. I have graffiti and another one, I can't remember, another white-headed cauliflower. I can't recall the name of it right now. And I have Imperial, Arcadia, and Green Magic. I think that's what I have for broccoli. I'll, I'll look and if I have another variety in here, I'll, I'll let you know. But So some are big plants like this here. And then hopefully you can see down here, I have smaller plants that I've snuck in just um, so that once these bigger ones are done they can take their place so it looks like they're really close together 
what the plan is, is once this is harvested, um, these can grow up. Now with broccoli, sometimes you can just keep the harvest going all season and this little plant may never see the light of day, but uh, it's, it's worth a shot to try and get them in here early and ready. Um, but I'll bring you in, you can have a better look at the, the uh, heads that are forming. This guy really wants to be over here. Freedom is the other cauliflower and that's this one right here. And it's, looks like it's starting to form a head but hasn't really done anything yet. But here's the cheddar cauliflower and it has a nice size head on it already. I don't know if I get across the leaves of them. There's my hand. It's a pretty nice size head. And it's actually looking like it might be getting close to harvest. I might harvest this uh, probably tomorrow morning, actually, by the looks of it. It's starting to get not quite as tight in here. Might even take this today while it's opened up. Now, this one looks like it's tried to go and is going to um, not really form a real head. Uh, and just do this little button and be done, I'm guessing. Like I said, not having the water in here was a bit of an issue. So hopefully these all don't just head up tiny heads and, and be done. Here's the broccoli that wants to fall on me, but you can see it has a nice little head started in there. Yeah, it looks like I'll have broccoli to harvest. in the not too distant future here and like I said I think I might take that cauliflower right away here. It's a small head of cauliflower but it's still a nice head. I wanted to take it today because I don't know if you can see it's starting to to separate between the little spaces there and that usually means that it's uh, getting close to past mature and uh, then the flavor really goes on it. So even though it's small, we'll take it now. Because if I wait and it gets much more heat, I think this is gonna be not very tasty. Right now, it'll be wonderful. So add that to that piece of lettuce I broke off. A little bit of a har harvest started. So, broccoli, when you harvest it, will grow more little heads along the stem, but cauliflower, pretty rare for it to do that. So I'll just cut this out. And then I have other smaller cauliflower around it that will have more room now to grow and fill out and uh, produce for me. And there's some of the onions. The onions were, uh, sown from seed uh, and the seed was seed I collected off of onions that went to flower last year. So be interesting to see what, uh, what I get out of those. In this bed here, I have my red Norlin potatoes and I planted this in two different sowings. So the back half of the bed I sowed, I think must be about three weeks earlier than the front half of the bed. Um, so I should, I should um, be able to get, uh, you know, this harvest over here a little bit earlier. And that's why you might be able to tell that these plants are just a little bit bigger. Um, then it's not a huge difference at this point, but I should see flowers over here on these plants dying back. You know, like I said, several weeks before this section over here. Um, I also have some sweet meat squash in the back and I think you can see the trellis there for it to climb up. So it's just getting to the point where it's starting to put tendrils out. So I would guess in the next week, week and a half, that will start to go up the trellis. And then I have a renegade pumpkin here um, that's just hopefully going to just kind of scramble through this bed. Uh, so that's going to be kind of interesting just to see how that works out. I've never had squash and pumpkins growing in with my potatoes before but the potatoes are doing a lot of their work underground and uh squash and that can vine out and, and do a lot above ground here and they'll have room between these two beds to kind of fill out um over the ground as well if they need to so we'll we'll keep up to date on how that's going behind me here in this bed i have 
a selection of cucumbers and parsnips and uh, several different squash. Now I covered uh, the squash in this bed pretty thoroughly in a video I did recently, so I'll put a card up there if you want to see a little bit more about the squash and how I'm growing it on trellising. And I'll take you through real quick and just tell you the uh, cucumber varieties on this side. The parsnips are hollow crown and they're just in behind the cucumber trellis. I planted them early and then they can grow and they don't really need anything from me until it's time to harvest. And by then the cucumbers will be out of my way so I can harvest. So it's a great use of space that way. Um, they'll get the sun from the other side uh, and and the, the cucumbers and squash can kind of grow around the parsnips and the parsnips won't mind that at all. In my cucumbers here, I have, I had this put, we had a really cold spring and very windy spring. And so I had the trellis up, I had the cucumbers in and we got some really nasty weather. So I had them, uh, the trellising wrapped in um, harvest cloth for almost a month. And then I took it down, but I wanted to give the plants a little bit of a transition as we were still having a little bit of cooler nights at that point. And I put these jugs of water in here between the plants, uh, just to, it would give a little bit of a windbreak and also give off some heat overnight as the plants were growing. So I'm slowly taking these jugs and watering things with them as I need water out here once in a while. So they, the jugs will slowly just disappear out of this space. I'm gonna have to get uh, one more in behind the trellis I need to grab out before these cucumbers get vining. Um, but that's why these jugs are here. Uh, it also kind of acts as a mulch. It's nice and damp under the jugs, so that's giving the root space a nice dampness, but cucumbers actually like warmth too, so hopefully it's not keeping the soil too cool. So I have Armenian. Armenian cucumbers over here. It's the first time I'm growing these. And then next to those is Babylon. That's a nice little cucumber. Grown it for a few years. This is my Persian gherkin. It's a nice little gherkin patio snacker. This is a nice small cucumber that you can actually, you could grow in a, in a pot as the name infers on your patio or somewhere. I just have it to grab and have their nice little sized cucumbers that you can just grab easily snack on or cut up and use um, in a salad. I also pickle them. They work great for that. So they're a nice versatile cucumber that you could fit into a smaller space. So next to that, I have a quarantine cucumber and then I have national pickling. So quarantine I've grown for a few years. It's a good little pickling cucumber. And then the national pickling is an AAS winner. Um, so it's supposed to be a really good cucumber and so I wanted to try it and grow it and see how it does for pickling. So I have approximately three plants of each variety and they'll grow up these little trellises here. This is how I grew them last year and it seemed to work really well. Um, I'll have to tie them on to this. They don't, they don't hold on real well um, until they really get going and have other vines to grab onto. But, and I try to keep them to one or two stems per plant just to to kind of contain, control the space a little bit here. Uh, it's a small space, I don't need to get too out of hand. So like I said, I have a video about the uh, various squash and pumpkins that I have growing over here, but they just have little trellises again. I'll probably have to tie them onto these trellises until they really, really get going, have some tendrils. Um, and there's a large trellis at the back just made out of old playground equipment and tea posts. Uh, so large variety of melons and pumpkins on this side of this bed. And then I had, again, just some six packs of uh, broccoli that I'd started that just needed somewhere to go and I decided to pop them in here and there's just I think three green magic plants the one is looking pretty rough something's been eating at it so it'll I'm not sure it's gonna do well oh actually I have four I've seen another one here um, there's a few little what looks like I had garlic in this bed last year it looks like I have some small garlic maybe coming up in here. I'm not sure what that is. And then I do have some self-seeded dill in here as well. So it's a busy bed. Let's check out the bed behind me. Before we go to the bed behind me, there's some baby jack mix uh, pumpkins, a little trellis behind and just a couple of 
green magic broccoli in there as well. So next to the bed we were just looking at is another <clears throat> is another bed that is pretty full of a variety of things. So I have a couple of East Elite squash back here that should grow up this trellis. I have some corn. I need to see if I still have time to replant some corn on this side because for some reason it doesn't seem like it came up very well on the other side of this bed but about the last third of this bed or so had corn planted in here. Uh, volunteer dill. And then I have some summer squash. Uh, so this is my dark green zucchini. I have two plants of that here. And then I, ha uh, I have two plants on the other, si on the other side that are um, just out of a, a surprise mix, they call it, from Fessy Seeds. So it's summer squash, but I don't know what varieties. Uh, last year, what I grew seemed to be probably just a yellow and a green zucchini. Um, under this little netting is a little bit of turnips that I've been trying to grow, but uh, this seems to be where the, the flea beetles or something wants to be this year. And uh, so they're not doing much. There's a little bit of garlic in here. And it looks like I need to do some thinning on some of this, these turnips that are growing. <clears throat> so I'll give you a look at that. In the front, I have some garlic and I can see I'm just starting to get a few scapes just starting to form here. Maybe just that one. So the garlic I planted in the fall, it's a hard neck garlic just from my own saved um, bulbs. And uh, yeah, usually I think it's the, uh, the end of July, beginning of August, I think when I usually wind up harvesting my garlic. but. Once these scapes get going, I can harvest those and enjoy them um, with some great garlic flavor. So looking forward to those. Again, I just popped a few, I believe these are cauliflower that I've popped in here. I think these are early snowball. I don't see the tag. And there's a few more in the front. And there's also an eggplant on either side. So there's one right there and there's one on the other side. So a busy bed. But that's, it's nice to have a variety of things in there. For one, I think it's good to keep the pests from finding your crops and they're interspersed with a lot of different things. And I like to use all the space I have and that helps to keep weeds down as well when the ground is covered. In these last two um, raised garden beds in my main original garden space, so there's this one in front of me and the one behind me, I have tomatoes planted down the centers of the beds and then peppers around the outer perimeter. And this bed also has a little bit of eucapa lettuce coming up. I've seeded um, radicchio and romaine over here, I think three times now, and they just do not want to grow. And they don't seem to want to grow in the other area of the lettuce. So those are pretty old seed, and I'm thinking that that seed is just too old to grow. Um, but otherwise, the tomatoes and the peppers are doing well. Uh, you can remember, uh, if you've seen some of my videos, my tomatoes had a rough start indoors with some bad soil and uh, they seem to have recovered. They all look like they're growing really strong now and doing well. They're flowering. I don't think I have any tomatoes set on them yet, but uh, they're looking really good and I'm hopeful that I'm going to get a really good crop of tomatoes off of them this year. The peppers were plagued by aphids inside my house, which was something I'd never experienced before. Uh, but getting them outside, being able to spray them off regularly just with water seemed to be the best way to kind of combat that. There are still a few aphids in here, but being outside, they'll have some natural, natural predators and uh, they're doing a lot better. So they have some peppers on them. And I did pull a few of the early peppers off, but now I'm just letting them do their thing and grow. So I should be able to be harvesting peppers. Well, actually, I've already harvested a few small peppers um, to use uh, just on a veggie tray last weekend. But uh, the main pepper harvest is just getting close. I also have two little pots of mini bell peppers that just didn't fit in this space. And so they're off to the side. Um, you may notice I plant my peppers and tomatoes really close together. My tomatoes are maybe a foot apart, like maybe 30 centimeters. And I find they do really well that way. We aren't a very humid climate. We're pretty dry here. Um, and I do 
keep them pruned up. So right now they're not super pruned, but as they get going here and get taller, I'll be pruning up the bottom so there's airflow between the plants. And uh, I find that does really well for helping with pollination and helping to support them because we are very windy here. So even with the staking in, they can use a little bit more support. And my peppers, I actually plant two plants in one hole. And again, I find I get a much heavier harvest that way. And I think they just, again, it helps to support the plants in the wind, um, but also helps to um, get more um, pollination happening. There's just that many more flowers concentrated in, in an area. So something to think about if you live in an area uh, that's a drier climate. I'm not sure in a very humid climate if that would work. You might wind up with disease, but here it works really well. So this space over here is one that I took over from my kids. There's my shadow. This used to be their kind of playground area when they were younger. I found my coffee again. So this whole raised bed is full of carrots. Worked well last year, so I thought I'd try it again. Um, I've had netting on it until about a week ago, I think it was. The netting was mostly just to keep the birds from pecking the carrots because they seem to like to come in here and peck away at all the little green carrots and plant seeds in this bed for me. So I decided to just net it until the, pep the carrots were a good size and uh, pretty thick in here so that I would kind of try to keep the birds out a little bit. I did realize that I didn't have my drip line in here. I had been doing some rearranging of things and had pulled it out and it wasn't in here and it's actually not still, it's still not working right. I need to replace this. One of the few lines I haven't replaced yet and it's a broken kind of soaker weeping drip in here. So I need to work on that one day when I get a chance. Uh, but this is a variety of carrots in here. I have Adelaide, Scarlet Nance, Nance, um, Little Finger, Chantenay, Neptune. I think there's one in here called Sweetness. So a whole variety of pepper, um, a whole variety of carrots. It's hard to know, but I actually planted that one little corner back there much earlier than all the rest, like over a month earlier. It doesn't seem to have gained me any advantages doing that, but uh, everything's coming up and looking really good. And when I've been doing my thinning, it does seem like some of the carrots are starting to, to form in here. Now this is a really tiny one that was right against another one here, but I am starting to get some that will be usable size just for little um, like on a veggie tray or something pretty soon here, some of the younger carrots. So that's exciting. We eat a lot of carrots in our house. So I'm trying to work with the shadows here, but the carrots were just over, kind of over my right shoulder here. And now we're over, this is where I have my melons. And I'm not sure how well this is gonna work out, but I'm never really super successful with my melon, with growing like watermelons and, and can't open that anyways, so. I need this space this year. I'm working on a project. Hopefully I'll get done in the fall and I'll bring you along when I'm a little more prepared for that. Uh, but so I wanted to, I needed to move these pots out of my way and this was the space I had to do it. So this gets sunshine in the early morning. It gets, and then each pot kind of has its moment. Each of the kind of back pots get their moment in the shade for a little bit of the day, but they're all getting at least eight hours, I think, of sunshine. So I'm hoping this works out. Um, you may notice I have a trellis here, which you probably haven't seen yet in a video. So this is a new trellis I just purchased. It's called the Titan Squash Tunnel, I think. I don't know, I bought it from Bessie Seeds, no affiliate or anything, just where I got it from. Um, but I'm hoping that as the melons grow, they're all on the far side of these pots it's towards the netting, that they'll grow up on the netting and then they should have more light hitting them throughout the day if I can get them raised up a little bit. So that's, that's where I'm going with this. Hopefully that works. These pots also have some gladiolus and some ranunculus in them. I've actually cut a ranunculus out of here and I have lots more coming. So I know those aren't vegetables, but 
It's my first year getting a good crop of ranunculus. So, I know it's through the netting, but I think this is gonna be your best uh, view of the squash here. So there's early, Canada Early Improved. Watermelon right down there. Scaly bark, it's looking the worst, I think, out of any of them. I'm not sure if I'll be able to get anything out of that. Pretty small plant still. There's tip top melon. This is a sweet Siberian. There's moon and stars, and I don't know how well you can tell, but the leaves are modeled. They're supposed to look like that on that variety. It's not sick. That's what it's supposed to look like. And Minnesota midget. And more ranunculus. The last thing on this little tour is I have two large um, fabric raised beds that I installed last year and then I also have some pots of potatoes so um, these raised beds like I said I put them together last year which just means I opened them and filled them with dirt and uh, I'm growing peas in this one this year and I'll have to put on the screen because I cannot remember the varieties but I have the one up front here one back here and they're they're doing quite well I just have this kind of weird little trellising thing going here now that the Neither of these are super huge pea plants, so this trellising will be enough. And uh, they're starting to, to want to vine and, and grow up the trellis here, get their tendrils on them. So I should be seeing them flower pretty soon and uh, be able to harvest some peas. The beans and the beets, I don't know, they're coming. So let's have a look at those. So here's my beans and beets and perennial onions and I have a few extra onions that a few extra sets from over in that uh, corner down there I'll show you that in a minute as you can see the beets here aren't doing that well um, so I don't know what keeps eating them off I can't see anything on them and I haven't noticed birds in here but I'm kind of wondering if birds are um, pecking at the greens because you see the stems are perfectly intact on all of them but it's just the greens are getting eaten right off. I, I'll probably go along. I've actually poked a few black beans, black, more black bean seeds down in here. And then I think I'll go along and um, reseed beets in amongst the beans and see if that kind of keeps them a bit more protected. Uh, kind of disguise them a little bit and see if that makes a difference. Because the beans aren't being touched at all by whatever's doing it from what I can tell. Maybe a little bit of damage on these right close to where the beets are, right on the edge of those leaves. Maybe it is from the birds. I don't know what's doing it. Um, but I just had fresh pack beets here to uh, give me some beet greens mostly. So if I go through and just put a few of a few different varieties, I'll have some, some beets for the actual beet roots and uh, get some fresh pack hopefully going as well. And then I have black turtle beans. These are bush bean down here. And I have, I think the far, there's kind of squares in these beds. The, the far um, square over there, I believe is my burgundy bush beans. And then I think my yellow bush beans. And then over here is kind of a fun heritage, uh, heritage seed that's uh, called Lena's beans and they are a pole bean and it's not exactly clear what type of bean they are but I think probably a white navy bean. The story is that uh, a family in Regina saved these beans that were handed out as food supplies in the 30s. They saved a few and planted them uh, to grow their own food and have been growing them ever since and that's where these bean, seed, these bean seeds come from is from that family saving them. So I have some of the Valina's beans around here and I put a few um, Gold Marie pole beans in on this side and I just kind of had these stakes in that there just to kind of mark around. I don't know why because the beans came up before I got it done I guess but I do have better poles because these are not tall enough 
and I've just purchased them finally. I found some that uh, I could purchase at a store here and uh, I just got some, so I'll be replacing that with some taller poles for the pole beans. And then the onions. The onions are looking really, really good. This is a perennial onion. I've never grown perennial onions uh, before last year, but I planted these here. They're supposed to be like a perennial green onion. And they've like came up and went to seed like almost immediately this year. So I'm not sure what I think of those because it doesn't look like I really have much for green onions coming down where they are. And then all this, what's nice finer green, uh, finer onion texture here is from the uh, onion starts that I planted. And there's some grass. I don't know how I have grass in this one bed. The beans are doing really well in this bed. The onions I planted this year started inside are looking pretty nice. The beets are definitely a fail and I'm gonna have to redo those. So over on my back fence, I have pots of potatoes and they're doing really well. So we'll see if I can find the, so this pot here, and you can't even really distinguish pot from pot, but this is the French fingerling. Um, I think I have three buckets of Norland right here. Uh, Amarosa, I think, yes. So this big one here is Amarosa. Uh, there's another one that might be Norland, um, but I I had some of my um, seed potatoes kind of mixed together, and I think that's actually wrote Ersterling. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, again, some Norlands, and this is Green Mountain, and you can see the Green Mountain. I just knocked it off, but it's starting to flower, so might have some potatoes coming soon. Uh, there's another uh, another red Norland, a couple more there. And these two right here are the pots that I planted in a video. And I said I wasn't sure if they were Norland or Rode Ersterling. And I'm pretty sure from the coloring on the leaves that they're Rode Ersterling. Uh, I don't know how well you can see, but there's kind of a purplish tinge to the leaves on these two. Um, and I'd said the sprouts looked a little bit different on these potatoes than the others. And that's also that one back there that I said I believe is Rode Ersterling as well. And I think even in my raised bed, I think I have one or two plants of this as well. I'd gotten the, the seed potatoes mixed together for those two varieties and they're very similar other than the sprouts were slightly different colors. So it looks like we've uh, finished this little tour here just in time because the sun is trying starting to pop up over the neighbor's trees there which casts all sorts of interesting shadows in here uh, makes it pretty difficult for me to show you things but uh, I think we got through most of it with some pretty decent shots so hopefully hopefully you're able to see everything I did realize I still have a couple of um, things I didn't show you um, one is a very large pot I'll just throw a clip in here it has some autumn frost squash in it um, and then I have my rhubarb, which I just did a huge harvest off of and, you know, made a beautiful rhubarb crisp. I put some rhubarb in the freezer for later because I love all those good rhubarb goodies. And my strawberries are flowering and starting to, to produce fruit now as well. So that's really exciting. Um, but overall, I think you got to see everything else that I have growing in my, my vegetable garden here. And, uh, I'm really excited for all the harvests that uh, I have to come here. So thanks for, thanks for coming along with me, and we'll see you next time.